This is Sebastian Middle Martinez for MMA Nyt. I'm here with Jack the Joker Hermanson, who faces Edwin Shabazian at UFC 262 on May 15th. So, Jack, you are back on track, and we rhymed, so that means it's true. Uh, back in a big fight, back against a big name. But before we get there, your last fight, unfortunately, didn't really go the way you were planning. And it seems like it was not quite as publicized as maybe it should have been, but you actually suffered a pretty serious injury very early on. Could you sort of detail what happened? Yeah, in the, in the first round, uh, I got a fracture to my eye socket, and that caused a severe blurry vision, uh, or like almost a twisted uh, vision. So it was extremely, extremely hard to uh, see and uh, to focus on anything in that fight. So uh, I felt like after, after the first round, uh, I just went into a kind of a, a desperation mode. And uh, I lost my plan a little bit, you know. It was really, really hard to, to focus without being able to see. So uh, it was a tough, uh, tough fight. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to turn this around and uh, get back with the win. Yeah, I mean, obviously never fun when you can't really show your true potential and when an injury comes in the way in that sense. Uh, but if things have gone pretty good for Marvin Vittori. And I'm thinking, like, are you in some ways kind of hoping for success for him? Because that sort of makes your your performance look a little bit better, especially now with the injury out in the open? Yeah, I, I think so. And uh, I'm always wishing the best uh, to my former uh, opponent. You know, it, 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 if they uh, won over me or if I was the winner, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, if I fought them before, I'm always rooting for them uh, in their future fights, you know. So uh, hopefully he does well and uh, yeah, maybe I will get the chance to, to fight him in the future, you know, uh, up there in the, in the top. It's going to be one of the nicest, most polite calls for a passive rematch that I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Typical nice Scandinavians. So... Uh, Let's move forward a little bit to uh, Edmund Shabazian, uh, a guy who's, who you mentioned before has been on your radar for a little while, little while but your paths didn't quite meet until now. Uh, obviously a guy, you know, a young guy, hungry guy, who then recently tasted his first defeat at the hands of, uh, of Derek Brunson. Uh, when you were first starting to see him sort of come up through the ranks, you, you know, he was making a lot of hype, a lot of noise. What, what was your makings of him before the Brunson fight? Uh... I thought that he, he looked good. He looked good. Uh, um, good fighter, good technical stand-up. Uh, but I do see him as mainly a, of a stand-up fighter. Um, I don't see him shining with his wrestling or, or grappling. So, uh, But yeah, he's a, he's a good striker. And following his defeat at the hands of Brunson, did your perception of him change in any way? No, not really. It, it confirmed a little bit what I thought was going to happen in that fight. Um, you know, if it gets uh, very physical, uh, a little bit uh, more of the wrestling, more of a high pace fight, um, uh, yeah, it didn't look, uh, it looked a little bit mortal, more mortal in, in that fight, you know. So, uh, and uh, style-wise, uh, that, that should uh, fit me pretty good. So maybe he didn't look so golden boy, but maybe a little bit more silver bronze. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so what would you say is your biggest strength then? Because on paper, one would say wrestling and takedowns is, you know, a clear path to victory against Shabazian. But, you know, sort of his Achilles heel has been exposed. Yeah, definitely. And I, I believe that that's where I have the upper hand. And, uh, uh, but... At the same time, you know, he can't sleep on my stand-up either. You never know what's going to come, and uh, he needs to be awake there as well. Um, while I feel like he's presenting, you know, just the stand-up as a threat, uh, I can't say that I'm, I, I'm very worried about his wrestling or his uh, grappling skills. So I feel like he has more to worry about uh, than me. Okay, great, great. And what would you say is your overall prediction, Ben? I mean, when you when you envision the fight in your head, how do you see it ending up? I think I'm going to finish the fight pretty quickly after I get it to the ground. So, uh, yeah, a first round finish, uh, some uh, good, good old uh, ground and pound, uh, maybe, or uh, perhaps a joker team.
<laughs> All right. Well, you are no stranger to quick finishes. Gerald Mearshark, David Branch, and Kelvin Gastelum can all attest to that. Yeah. Uh, now, you're Swedish. Uh, you're you know Swedish at heart, but you now based in England. We're always going to continue claiming you as Swedish. But obviously, yeah, you're representing Norway as well. Uh, but Norway still continues to stand on as the, the lone Scandinavian country that doesn't have MMA legalized, despite the fact that they have now legalized bare knuckle boxing, which was, uh, I mean, when our fans, when we posted that story online, people on Facebook were like, are they joking? Like they're allowing this, but not MMA. What was your reaction to that? Well, not just the bare knuckle boxing is, you know, even the, the pro boxing, uh, yeah. because, um, when you talk about, you know, I remember when we had the debate in Sweden and uh, before it was legal there, uh, everything, we just talked about, you know, the, the brain damage, that was the focus. And when you legalize a sport like boxing that has more punches to the head than MMA, then you should be past that. And it should be easy to just say, okay, uh, let, let's do MMA as well. But uh, obviously there is resistance uh, among people that are uh, in high standing here. Uh, so we'll just have to fight and, and one day, you know, hopefully they can't uh, turn it down because so it really doesn't make sense. It's no logic at all uh, at the moment. Is there any sort of part of you secretly hoping that the bare knuckle event goes really bad, like there's a terrible, gruesome cut, so that you can kind of say to the Norwegian politicians, like, look, see, this is way worse than MMA? No, you know, I think the facts are already on the table, so nothing bad should uh, e even need to happen for them to open their eyes. I think more that we need a debate in Norway, we need to get our uh, voices heard. That's what it's all about, you know. So, so that people can understand that uh, they, they can't turn our sport down when, when something else uh, li like that is uh, is happening. But uh, that being said, I have friends that, that's going to be fighting on that bare knuckle boxing. So I, I hope they, they, they do well and I hope it's going to be a, a cool event, you know. So, uh, but yeah, uh, it, 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 it's a pity that uh, we can't uh, be, fi be fighting here. Yeah, true. In the end of the day, I guess Scandinavia and martial artists got to stick together. You know, it's... That truly is the best way to go in the end of the day. Yeah. So, uh, uh, rounding off just a little bit, uh, before we get to sort of your your uh, uh, leaving here, UFC 262 will be capped off by a title title fight or a vacant title fight for the vacant uh, lightweight championship, Charles Oliveira versus Michael Chandler. You mentioned before that the fights after your own, you can actually take the time to appreciate as a fight fan, analyst, and expert, really, who do you see winning or becoming the new UFC lightweight champion and why? Well, I thought that Oliveira was going to do it uh, several years ago. I was just like, man, th this guy's going to be the champ one day. And it's so sad that we can't see him against Khabib because he, he would yeah. really be, you know, the best ground fighter from his back ever to, to face Khabib. And, and that would be something to behold. And that being said, we have the other guy, Michael Chandler, you know. It's also a pity that we can't see him against Khabib because Michael Chandler is probably the best scrambler in the world, you know, when it comes to, to the wrestling scrambling uh, in MMA. So uh, I would love to see b the, both uh, of those guys, those guys against uh, Khabib. But now we have to see them against each other instead. And uh, I think that... Um, uh, both guys are, are, are great, but uh, I have my 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 uh, prediction on Oliveira in that one. You know, he has been looking so slick uh, in, in his last couple of fights. You know, so uh, I think it's his turn. All right, there you have it. And finishing off here, what can fans around the world and on site at the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas, expect from your comeback against Edmund Shabazian? They can expect the best Jack Hermanson so far. I'm super hungry. I'm looking forward to get back in the win streak. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fantastic fight. I don't doubt it for a second. That's why you've been a favorite for Scandinavian fans and then branching out to international fans alike. Always a pleasure, Jack. Thank you very much and good luck in the fight. Thank you so much.